Hello guys. Welcome to my second rant on my channel, and today's will be on the steam green light quality control. And to warn you, I'm not ranting on the engine as a whole. I'm ranting on the green light system and why it sucks. Also, there will be some swearing, so viewers discretion is advised. Now, let's get right into this. Steam green light quality control. Oh my god. This system sucks. I will tell you the reasons why. First off, voting to get a game on Steam was extremely easy to abuse. Using bots to get votes, bribing, reposting the game after it fails, etc. Green light made it too easy for literally any game to be put on sale. One of the most infamous examples is Zombitados, the end of the PC Master Race, which was published despite not getting properly greenlit. Second off, as far as Valve was concerned, the only thing that mattered for games approved on green light was if the game was functional, the actual quality of the game didn't matter. Because of that, the vast majority of games that were approved by green light were of very low quality. In fact, sometimes games were published without an executable file, meaning even non-functional games could get on the store. Third, a lot of hentai, pornographic games that were published on Steam came from green light. Almost all hentai game developers dodge Steam's restrictions on pornographic content by releasing the games on the store minus the adult content and releasing a separate patch to restore it. Yet it can still be accessed by children via age cheating. Not to mention that some of them have scenes which seem to have things like rape, sexual harassment and heavy BDSM themes going on, sometimes even in censored versions. What makes it even worse is that most of them have a pretty awful or mediocre at best gameplay and poor writing. Fourth, some of the games approved are even malware in disguise. Fifth, some developers released fake screenshots and information about their games on green light just so their games could get approved. Sixth, there was no limit to how many games a developer could upload to green light, allowing shovelware developers to spam games nonstop including even reskins of the same game. Seventh, if a game failed to get greenlit the developer could just post it again with a different title over and over until it gets published. Eighth, allow the mass outbreak of asset flip games, called fake games by Valve, to happen. Now decent games are completely overshadowed by floods of shovelware. Ninth, the Greenlight program didn't stop bad indie game developers from entering the Steam marketplace, in fact, it made it easier for them. Bad developers spammed countless shovelware into green light with the intention of farming trading cards to make a quick buck. Tenth, the green light system allowed unfinished, early access indie games to get published on Steam. This caused a lot of bugs in a lot of unfinished green light indie games, with Steam users complaining that it was not a real game, as they are unfinished. And the only thing to redeem this is the fact as easy to exploit as green light was, it still helped many real indie developers with genuine talent get their games published on Steam when normally they would have been ignored. I would like to give a special credit to the crappy games wiki for having a lot of info on this even if it is false. Another special credit goes to DXFan619 for discussing about the green light system on his Raven's Cry review. And I would like to give a special thanks to my subscribers. Without you, this channel wouldn't be where it is. Thank you all for watching.